Hello everyone and welcome to Venom Media and Sounds. Looking into the lives of the most influential and integral figures in modern day Zimbabwe. Today, in the first part of our three-part documentary series, we are looking at Mr. Strive Masiwa, who's a father, businessman and philanthropist as well as founder and executive chairman of Econet Global. Born on the 29th of January 1961 in Rhodesia, modern day Zimbabwe, he was seven years old when his family fled and settled in Kitwe, Zambia, a city known for its copper deposits. There are three factors to consider when thinking of making such a move. These were difficult times. You have to look at opportunities, politics, war. Opportunities. Strife's mother was an entrepreneur with interest in retail sales, small-scale farming, and transportation. Zambia at this point was an ideal place to do business, especially when one has to consider that Zimbabwe has been in turmoil for the better part of four years. His father was a miner and copper was the mineral and Kitwe was rich from it, so he made a fortune and joined the family business. Politics. The future was uncertain for Rhodesia as she was battling an internal conflict. As the movement to end the white minority rule was gaining momentum, Ian Smith's government began to crumble, while on the other hand, Kenneth Kaunda was firmly the leader of Zambia, fresh from being elected as president on the 19th of December, 1968. War. The war of liberation was fresh and dangerous. With uncertainties looming in the vicinity, the family concluded that the only way to protect themselves was to move to Zambia. With business booming, it was time for Stripe to take his next big step. At the age of 12, his family sent him to study overseas at a private school in Scotland. Now one begins to wonder, to what extent was his early life easy? A golden spoon kind of thing, huh? Let's look at factors about wealth that his family has managed to attain. Not, and caught, not everyone could and can afford their children an education overseas, later on a private institution. So, will it be wrong for someone on the other side of things to assume that Masiwa was going to be successful anyhow, even if he didn't do all what he had done? He could have worked in the family business or gotten a big job overseas and still be considered successful on average a standard of measure. Wealthy families tend to set their children up for success. They socially engineer their children into being a successful person. They groom and mentor their hairs with everything they had or that which money can buy to set them on a path to success. And that's what we call privilege. If you are from a rich class, you always be a part of the rich class and it ends up being generational. Google his children, witness a legacy and check out Chatunga in the process. Man, if I was rich like that, I would pour Hennessy on my Rolex and watch the time stand still in three, two, one. Lights, cameras, action. 1978 was the year for Masiwa's big move. So rooted, journey back to where it all began. Rhodesia, fighting black oppression were his intentions, but his hopes for joining the liberation movement that was now at its peak were shot dead. Efforts rendered fruitless by an officer who saw something in him. Visionary, you might call him. Look, we are about to win the war anyway. And what we really need right now is guys like you to help rebuild Zimbabwe. It might have been a blow considering the change of plans. With a profound determination, he headed for WOWs and studied electrical and electronic engineering for a while and graduated in 1983. Strive worked for a while in the computer industry while least in England before his return to what is now called Zimbabwe after Uhuru. All right, folks, that's all we have for this episode. See you on the next one as we look at the start of Econet and his battles with the government.